You already know how to provision an Apex instance on Oracle Cloud interactively using a web browser. But can you automate the provisioning of Apex on Oracle Cloud using scripts? Yes, you can. My name is Taufik. I'm Senior Product Manager on the Oracle Apex Product Development Team. In this video, you will learn how to provision an Apex instance on Oracle Cloud using REST APIs, Command Line Interface, and SDKs. Let's get started. To send a successful request to OCI, you need to sign the request with an API key. REST APIs, CLI, and SDKs use this API key to authenticate with the OCI tenancy when sending a request. To create an API signing key, click on the hamburger menu, select identity and security, click on users under identity, select the user you want to use to authenticate the request sent to Oracle Cloud. For this demo, I'll be using the administrator user. As you can see, this user is part of the administrators group. This is a default group that gets created when you create your Oracle Cloud account. Users in administrators group will have access to manage all resources in your tenancy. Let's create API key for this user. An API key is an RSA key pair in PM format. It has a public key and a private key. You can either generate a new key pair and download the private key or if you already have a key pair, you can upload the public key and use it to create an API key. I will go with generating a new API key pair. Download the private key to your local device. Store the private key in a secure location and change the file permissions so that only you can view it. Click on add to add the API key for this user. This creates an API key fingerprint and a configuration file. You need to save the contents of this configuration file on your local device. To do that, I open my terminal. Create a hidden directory called .oci. Navigate to the directory. I will first copy the downloaded private key file to this directory. Let's confirm if the file is copied successfully. Next, I open this directory in a code editor and create a file called config. Grab the config file contents from the OCI console and paste it in the newly created config file on your local device. For the key file, paste the path to your private key file which you downloaded during the creation of API signing key. This completes the prerequisite steps. The next section is provisioning Apex on Oracle Cloud using REST APIs. The Oracle Cloud Infrastructure APIs are typical REST APIs that use HTTPS requests and responses. In this demo, I create a shell script which uses curl utility to make a REST request to OCI to create an autonomous database with workload type as Apex. I'll start with creating a working directory. First, I'll create a request.json file. This file contains a JSON object containing the details of the Apex instance that will be created. This JSON object will be sent as the request body. Update the compartment ID parameter with the OCI ID of the compartment in which you want to create your Apex instance. In this demo, I'll be creating an Apex instance in my root compartment. The name of this Apex instance will be Apex with REST and the DB workload will be Apex. What I'm doing here is I'm basically creating an autonomous database of workload type Apex. Provide an admin password. This will be the same password you will use to log in into the Apex administration services. More details about other configuration options is available in the documentation. The link to the documentation can be found in the blog attached in the description below. Now let's start creating the shell script. I will cheat here a little. I already have the script created. I'm going to use that. You have to fill tenancy OCI ID, user OCI ID and other variables with appropriate values. All this information can be found in the config file we copied from the API signing key window. I will copy these values from the config file. For the host, you need to enter the rest endpoint. 
which will be database dot the region which you can get from the config file dot oracle cloud dot com the body variable holds the path to request dot json file which is the request body the next step is defining the required headers for the api request the list of required headers can be found in the documentation the first header is the request target header which is a concatenation of request method and the request path and the host header date header for the content header the request body needs to be encrypted with sha256 and encoded to base64 the content type header since our request body is a json it will be application slash json and the content length after defining the headers and their values the next step is to create a signing string first the order of the headers in the signing string is defined and stored in a variable and then the signing string will be concatenation of all the header values in the same order once the signing string is ready it is encrypted and signed using the private key downloaded before and then encoded to base64 let us see how the signature looks like let me comment out this code for time being and echo the signature out I will use the terminal to execute this script this is how the signature looks like let's get back to the code let me undo the changes now the final step is making the curl request this will be a post request the request body is sent as bytes and the endpoint the endpoint has the host variable which we have defined earlier and all the required headers are added now that the script is ready let us execute it on a successful request a response object is written which contains the details of the newly created autonomous database on the OCI console apex instances page you can verify that an apex instance is getting provisioned this confirms that the request is successful now that you have the script ready if you want to create an apex instance all you have to do is update the request.json file with the desired configuration and execute the script this triggers the provisioning of an apex instance on OCI once the instance is available you can click on launch apex to access Apex administration services. Moving on to the next section. After REST APIs, the next option you can use to script the provisioning of Apex on Oracle Cloud is the OCI command line interface utility. In this demo, I will install OCI CLI on my local device and use it to provision an autonomous database with Apex workload on Oracle Cloud. To install OCI CLI on Mac, you can use Homebrew utility. This installs all OCI CLI dependencies, including Python. After successful installation, you can check the version using this command. You can then run OCI DB autonomous database create command with the respective arguments. Here I'm trying to create an autonomous database with the name Apex with CLI with apex as the db workload admin password is also provided as one argument this oci cli utility uses the config file stored in the dot oci slash config location on your local device to authenticate the request on successful execution similar to rest apis this returns a json object containing the details of the newly created autonomous database Provisioning of the Apex instance can be verified on the OCI console. That is how you provision Apex on Oracle Cloud using OCI CLI utility. Moving on to next section. Apart from REST APIs and OCI CLI, using OCI SDKs is another way you can automate and script the creation of Apex instance on Oracle Cloud. SDKs are available in various languages like Java, Python, TypeScript, JavaScript, .NET, Go, and Ruby. In this demo, 
I'll create a Python script which uses the Python SDK to create an Apex instance on Oracle Cloud. The first thing to do is create a virtual environment. Once the virtual environment is created, activate it. Now the OCI Python SDK can be installed in this virtual environment using the pip command. After the SDK is installed, I'll create a directory to hold the Python script I'm gonna create. I call it OCI PY SDK scripts. Now open this directory in VS Code to create the Python script. I'll name the script as createapex.py. I already have the script ready. You can find the script in the blog attached with this video. To use the OCI Python SDK, you first have to import it using the import OCI command. The config variable stores the configuration information from the config file on your local device created during the API signing key creation. The compartment ID variable holds the compartment ID from the config. This is the compartment where Apex instance will be created. This is the create adb method which creates the autonomous database. This initializes a create autonomous database details object with default attribute values. These values can be overwritten in the subsequent steps. For example, uh, let us update the db name as epics with sdk. All the details about the available attributes can be found in the documentation. I'll be creating a db workload type as apex to create an apex instance. And the admin password can be changed here. Once the details are updated, you can call the create autonomous database method. This method is in the db client object, which is passed as an argument. You can see in the main method is where the db client is initialized and passed to the create adb method. On successful execution, this method returns a response which contains the details of the newly created database that is printed and the data id which is the OCI ID, is also returned from this method. This method is called in the main scope. So when you execute this script, the main scope gets executed which in turn calls the create adb method. With the script ready, let us execute the script to create an Apex instance. Back on the terminal with virtual environment activated, I can execute the Python script. On the successful execution, the OC ID of the newly created database is printed. On the OCI console, we can verify that a new database with name apex with sdk is in provisioning state. This is how you can create an apex instance on oracle cloud using OCI python sdk. Now the bonus tip. The OCI CLI utility and all sdks are pre-installed on the oracle cloud shell. You can either use CLI or any sdks of your choice to install apex on oracle cloud without worrying about any installations. This concludes the demonstration. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.